Okay. So when you, when you when we talk about the left ventricular systolic function, and you know you guys have been exposed to some aspects of uh, echo and cardiology. So when we talk about LV systolic function, that is what the heart does when it contracts. You know the heart. So when when you look at the heart, the heart contracts. That means it comes in and it also um, goes out. So when it comes in, that's what we call systolic function. And when it expands and fill with blood, uh, that's what we call diastole. Again, when you when when we look at uh, the ECG, we divide the ECG into systole and diastole. Okay. So again, everything we do in echo is gated. That is either a systolic phenomenon or a diastolic phenomenon. So in systole, the heart contracts, it comes in, it pumps the blood out. And then in diastole, it relaxes and fill with blood. So that's what we call diastole. But today we're gonna to look at the systolic function, okay? And the reason why we look at systolic function, systolic function is very uh, prognostic. It will tell you how well the patient is gonna do. So by just knowing some aspect of the systolic function, you know, if the patient say had a heart attack, you can predict how well he's gonna do by just knowing the, uh, the, the, the systolic function. All right, so we're gonna look at the, you know, how to assess systolic function and then the different methods to assess systolic function. That is, of course, how to assess when the heart contracts, uh, give it some sort of objectivity, okay? You can just eyeball it and see what's happening, but we need some sort of objective data to, to compare patient from, from time to time or to compare uh, different patients. And the methods that we use to evaluate left ventricular systolic function uh, ejection fraction. So we're gonna go over that. And that basically, as the name suggests, it is the fraction of blood that, 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 that that's pumped out from the, 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 the ventricles. And we are, we are on the left side now. So we just, when we talk about um, ejection fraction, we're talking about left ventricular uh, ejection fraction, okay? So it is the fraction of blood that's pumped out. And if you think about it, uh, if you're a little bit mathematic mathematically inclined, so to get the, 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 the volume of blood that's pumped out per beat, so we look at the diastolic volume. So the, in diastole, the heart fills with a certain amount of blood. And then in systole, after it pumps out uh, a certain amount of blood, at the end of systole, it's going to contain a certain volume. If we take the systolic volume from the diastolic volume, and we, and so if we take the, the, the systolic volume from the diastolic volume, that, that gives us the volume of blood that is pumped out per beat from the, the left ventricle. And we can, we can further classify that if we're gonna talk about ejection fraction, then it would be, the volume that's pumped out per beat divided by the volume that's contained in the, 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 the ventricle at the end of diastole, in diastole. So the formula for ejection fraction, we're gonna go over this. The formula for ejection fraction is diastolic volume, which is end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume divided by end diastolic volume. Again, if you, if you just think about it, conceptualize it, at the end of diastole, the heart is gonna be filled with a certain amount of blood. At the end of systole, it's gonna be filled with a certain amount of blood. The difference is what is pumped out, okay? And so if you get the diastolic volume, you subtract the systolic volume, you may get the volume that's pumped out. The volume that pumped out over the diastolic volume will give you the fraction that's pumped out, and that's what we call the ejection fraction. Um, there's another term 
or another measure or another method that we use is the fractional shortening. The fractional shortening is not a volumetric me uh, uh, measure. So when we talk about ejection fraction, it's a volumetric measurement, whereas fractional shortening is a linear measurement. And you just measure the, the, the length of diastole, the length of systole. You subtract the length of systole from the length of diastole and divide it by the length of diastole, and you get a fractional shortening. Um, so it is not as accurate as ejection fraction, but it, it's OK. Then later on, we'll go into one motion, uh, one motion and one motion score index. Um, in order for us to do wall motion and wall motion score index, we have to divide the heart walls into different segments. And that's, that's key. That's very important. So we'll spend a little time going over that. Uh, stroke volume. So what I mentioned up top was the stroke volume. So the stroke volume is the, 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 the volume of blood that's pumped out from the left ventricle per beat. The volume of blood that's pumped out from the left ventricle per beat. So it is going to be the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume. So if you think about it, that is the volume of blood that's pumped out. And the name for that is the stroke volume. Cardiac output. When we talk about cardiac output, we talk about uh, how much the volume of blood that's pumped out per minute from the heart. So these are specific definitions that you need to uh, know. Okay, so cardiac output is the volume of blood that's pumped out from the heart per minute. So it's going to be the stroke volume times the heart rate. So all of these things are sort of a logical. Um, they're very logical. So cardiac output is the stroke volume times the heart heart rate. So the heart rate, we usually, you know, if someone have a heart rate of 90, it is the number of beats per minute, 90 beats per minute, OK? We commonly talk about the mitral valve E point. And this is, this is very important. It's something you can eyeball. You can measure it. And it will also give you an idea of the LV systolic function, how well the heart is contracting. and then. When we finish this topic, we'll finish up with the coronary artery distribution. That is how the blood vessels, the coronary arteries, uh, spreads out over the heart. All right, so let's go into the different methods. So when we talk about cardiac function, remember that the heart is a pump. The heart is a muscular pump. And when we talk about cardiac function, it is the ability of the heart to pump a certain volume of blood per minute. And the volume of blood per minute is what we call the cardiac output. So the cardiac output um, gives you an idea of the cardiac function, how well the heart is functioning. And as mentioned before, we divide it into a systolic function, that is how well the heart is contracting, and then we have a diastolic function, that is how well the heart is relaxing and filling with blood. And you can also talk about an overall function, uh, combining both your systolic and your diastolic function. All right. So, uh, you know, the, the, these are the different methods, as we, as we have mentioned. As we have mentioned, these are the different methods that we use. Ejection fraction, fractional shortening, wall motion, score index, mitral valve, E-point separation, stroke volume, and cardiac output. All right, so we're going to look at the ejection fraction. And as mentioned before, it is the volumetric fraction of blood pump out of the ventricle with each heartbeat. So it is the volume. Uh, or the, the best term is the volumetric fraction. So what you do, you get the volume of blood that's pumped out uh, per beat, which is the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume. So that's the volume of blood that's pumped out per beat. 
and you divide it by the end diastolic volume. So you probably need a little time to think about it. Okay? It's not something you, you should memorize, it's something you should know. So at the end of diastole, the heart is going to fill with blood. It fills up with blood. And then at the end of systole, when it pumps blood out, it's going to have a certain amount of blood contained in the left ventricle. The difference between the two volumes is the volume of blood that was pumped out from the left ventricle. Remember what we said, that, that volume difference is what we call the stroke volume. So the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume is the stroke volume. And if you divide that by the end diastolic volume, you get uh, the ejection fraction. So this is the formula for ejection fraction. And um, you need to, to know how, how it's derived because you can't memorize it, okay? All right, so the, 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 the method, and this is something that you'll be tested on. The, the, the method that we use to evaluate ejection fraction is the modified Simpson's rule or the biplane method of DISC. Modified Simpson rule or the biplane method of DISC. Okay? So this is how it's done. So. This is a diastolic frame. Again, your ECG is on the bottom. End diastoles are the onset of the QRS. So this is your left ventricle. You do what we call you do planimetry of the endocardial border. You plane the endocardial border straight around. And then you drop from the apex, you drop a, supposed to be a perpendicular down. Okay. And your computer divides this LV into a series of disks. So each of these you know, is, is a series of disks, and it computes a volume. So it gives you a volume. So if you look here, this volume is 84.6 ml. And then in systole, you do the same thing. Okay, so again, you know, it's a systolic frame because you're uh, at the end of the T wave. All right, so you, you do planimetry of the endocardial border, okay, and then you're supposed to drop a perpendicular down, and then if the computer is going to divide that cavity in a series of disks, and it's going to compute a volume. So this is your end diastolic volume. This is your end systolic volume. The difference between the two is what we call your stroke volume. So per beat at when the heart contracts or when the heart pumps one time, it's going to pump uh, pump out a certain amount of blood. So the difference between the end diastolic and the end systolic volume is the stroke volume. Okay? If you divide the stroke volume by the end diastolic volume, that's the ejection fraction. Okay. And if you multiply your stroke volume times the heart rate, you get the cardiac output. All right, so these are some, some typical values, and these numbers have changed. I just want to give you an idea. We'll do, at the end of the session, we'll go over the updates. So there, are, there are updates for, um, you know, uh, this period. But the typical end diastolic volume is, is about 120 ml. It, it varies from 65 to 240 ml. A typical end systolic volume is about 50, and it ranges from 16 to 143. Stroke volume, which is the difference between your end diastolic volume and your end systolic volume, the, 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 that stroke volume is roughly about 70 ml. Just a difference. So 120 minus 50. 70. And then the ejection fraction. So what you do, you're going to take your end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume divided by the end diastolic volume. So it's going to be the stroke volume, which is 70, divided by 120. And that's 
you know, about 58%, range from about 55 to 70%. The cardiac output, which is the stroke volumes times the heart rate. Uh, so you get the stroke volume, which is 70 mLs, and whatever the heart rate is, you multiply. And it should be about four to eight liters per minute. And the typical value is about 5.25 uh, liter per minute. So that's what the heart is pumping. Okay, about five liters every minute the heart pumps out that amount of blood. Okay, so just to show you how we do the math. So again, ejection fraction is your end diastolic volume minus your end systolic volume divided by the end diastolic volume. So the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume, that's a stroke volume. And you divide it by your end diastolic volume, which is 120, It'll give you 0.58 and the ejection fraction is about 58%. So even though we talk about an ejection fraction, we usually put it in a percentage. But, you know, if you put, if you leave this, say, 0.58, then it's understood. And, you know, fraction is a fraction. But you can convert this to percentage, and you get 58. All right. So that is ejection fraction. And whenever we... Any echo that we do, we always, one of the first thing that we talk about is the ejection fraction. So you have to be comfortable in, 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 in doing the ejection fraction. You have to be comfortable in um, reporting the ejection fraction, okay? So go over it. Your next time you, see, you, you, you do your scanning session, uh, make sure you look at the end diastolic volume, look at the end systolic volume, and uh, most of your machines will give you the stroke volume. And uh, if you do planimetry, it will, it will give you um, the ejection fraction as well. Now we come to fractional shortening. So when we talk about ejection fraction, ejection fraction is a volumetric measurement, volumetric we use in volumes, whereas fractional shortening is a linear measurement, okay? We just measure the length. We measure the length in diastole, and we measure the length in systole, and we do a computation, okay? So, you know, it, it's not as accurate, but um, we still use it. It was used uh, more frequent, uh, you know, some time ago. So it is the percentage change in the left ventricular cavity dimensions at the base with contraction. So in diastole, the LV cavity is going to have a certain length or dimension. And then at end systole, it's going to have a certain length or dimension. And this measurement is done at the base. We, we, have, we use two methods. Um, Uh, we, we, we can use the M mode method, and I know we have not done M mode, but you know we can use M mode and we can use two dimensional echo. Um, the, 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 the numbers that we use for both uh, differs a little bit. For M mode, a normal fractional shortening is greater than 25%. So again, what we do, left ventricular end diastolic dimension and from that we're going to subtract the left ventricular end systolic dimension we divide that by the left ventricular end diastolic dimension multiplied by 100 and that's a fractional shortening so with, with the m mode so this is the m mode and i'm going to use a couple of seconds to go over m mode with you guys um so on top, this is our two-dimensional echo. Your, this symbol represents your transducer, and this is the cursor. The cursor is, is looking at the structures that um, your ultrasound is looking at. So the cursor is right here. So you, 
you're gonna your your M mode is gonna look at the chest wall at this point. It's gonna look at the the pericardium at this point. It's gonna look at the RV wall, because this is the RV wall, if you remember your anatomy or scanning views really. So this is the RV wall. It's gonna pass across a little bit of the RV. So this is the RV right here. And then this is the septum. So the cursor is passing across the septum. It crosses the LV cavity, which is right there, and it crosses the posterior wall. So these are the structures that this the cursor passes through. And when you press your M mode button, it's gonna give you the M mode uh, uh, representation of all of these structures. So right up here is the chest wall. Right up here is the chest wall. Below the chest wall, you have the, the, the pericardium is right there. Below the pericardium is the RV wall. So this represents the RV wall. Below the RV wall is a small portion of the RV cavity. So all of this is the RV cavity. Below that, this is your septum. This is the septum, ventricular septum. See, this is the cursor passes through the ventricular septum. And then below that is the LV cavity. So this is the LV cavity. And after that is this is the posterior wall. Okay. And below the posterior wall is the pericardium. So the same structures that the cursor is looking at, the M mode give you a representation of. Okay. So very simple. When the heart contracts, the septum moves towards the posterior wall. The posterior wall and the septum moves towards each other. So this point represents systole. Straightforward. The heart, the heart is contracting, and when the heart contracts, the walls come together. The, the walls try to come together. So this portion where the septum dips down and the posterior wall dips up, this is systole. And then where they separate, that's diastole. So that's how we do our measurements. So that's our left ventricle end systolic dimension. So you, you put your, your caliper from this point down here and you measure it. And it's the left ventricle end systolic dimension. And you do the same thing where they're widest apart, okay? Where they're widest apart, you put your caliper and you do your measurements left ventricle end diastolic dimension. And so what you're gonna to do to get the fractional shortening, you're gonna subtract from your left ventricle end diastolic dimension, the left ventricle end systolic dimension, and you're gonna divide by the left ventricle end diastolic dimension. So this is the formula, okay? And again, for M mode, if it's greater than 25%, then we say it's normal, fractional shortening greater than 25%. For your M, for your two-dimensional echo, then again, so this is using two-dimensional echo to do fractional shortening. So everybody should know to see a power sternal long axis view. Okay, you, you do your measurements at the tip of the mitral leaflet. So at, at the end of diastole, which represents the onset of the QRS. You do a linear measurement. You measure the, the, the width of the, uh, uh, or the dimension of the, the LV cavity. And then in systole, where, whereas, you know, if you want to measure it at the, the end of the T wave or at the peak of the T wave, you know it's systole because the mitral valve is closed and the aortic valve is open and you measure the dimension at the tip. Measurement is done at the tip of the mitral leaflet. So you get your diastolic measurement. You see your mitral valve is open, your aortic valve is closed. Then you do your systolic measurement. Mitral valve is closed, the aortic valve is open. And then you just compute it. So the computation is your left ventricle end diastolic dimension minus your left ventricle end systolic dimension divided by your left ventricle end diastolic dimension times 100. So you can do fractional shortening 
using the M mode method or you can use your two dimensional uh, method. Okay. So greater than 25% for M mode is normal. For two dimensional echo, greater than 18% is normal. Okay. All right. So I am not, there's another method that we, you know, simplified quinone. I'm not going to go into that because you, you know, we don't really, it's only for exam purpose. It's not something that we use in clinical practice. So I'm not going to go over that. There's also another M mode feature that we use. Uh, we call we call it the mitral valve E point sector separation EPSS, the mitral valve E point sector separation, and it's an M mode method. And let me show you what we do so you'll have an appreciation of what. Okay, so again, two dimensional echo is on top. Cursor. Ah, uh, sorry, this is your transducer there. The cursor is right here. Again, the cursor is passing through a number of structures, okay? The chest wall, the pericardium, the RV wall, it passes through the RV, it passes through the, this is the septum, ventricular septum, it passes through the LV cavity, but not only that it passes through the LV cavity, it passes through the mitral valve, it passes through the anterior and the posterior mitral uh, valve, and it, it, it goes down to the posterior wall. So down below where you have your M mode representation, it's the same thing you're gonna see. It's just that it's in it's in a, a M mode uh, representation. So this is the chest wall right here. Chest wall is right there. Below the chest wall, just before you get to the RV wall, you have the pericardium, pericardium. Then you have the RV wall, the right ventricular wall. Then the RV cavity is right there. Then you move from the RV cavity, this is the ventricular septum. Below the ventricular septum, you have your LV cavity. So all inside here is, is the LV cavity. So blood or fluid is dark, tissue is uh, sort of gray, a gray, gray disc, uh, coloration. So the, the this black the, the black represents fluid, which is blood. Okay. Um so this is our septum right here. This the LV cavity, which is black and is right inside her. So what is the structure inside the LV cavity? Remember, the, the you can only get in your M mode what the cursor is seen. If, if you look closely after the septum, the cursor travels into the LV cavity. It looks at the anterior mitral leaflet, and then it looks at the posterior leaflet and go to the posterior wall. So these are the structures that are seen here. This is what the anterior mitral leaflet looks like on M mode. This is what the anterior leaflet looks like on M mode. The posterior leaflet is a mirror image of it. So. This looks like a, a, a M configuration, okay? Okay, so this is, so this is your mitral valve. This is the, the M mode representation of the mitral valve. This is what we call the E point. And we have a separate lecture to go over this, so don't worry if you don't get it. Uh, you know, it's just to, to, for you to appreciate what we mean when we say mitral valve E point septal separation. So this is the E point. This is our F point. This is our A point. This is our C point. So when we say mitral valve E point septal separation, this is the septum. This is the E point. How much separation there is. In a normal heart, there shouldn't be much separation at all. If the heart is contracting very well, if the contractility is normal, your E point should be very close to the septum. Okay, so this is the E point. This is the E point. This is the septum. Okay, so when we talk about mitral valve, because this is a mitral valve, mitral valve uh, E point, E point is right there. 
the septum is right there. The separation is the distance between them. So how we use that is we can use it to classify ejection fraction as either normal or reduced. So that's all we can say about it. The ejection fraction is normal or it's reduced. And the separation should be less than uh, 10 millimeters, okay? The separation between the E point and the, the septum should be less than 10 millimeters. Anything greater than 10 millimeters suggests reduced LV ejection fraction. So when you measure it and you, you, you do the measurement, if it's greater than 10 millimeters, it suggests that the LV, the ejection fraction is reduced. You want to see no separation or minimal separation between them, okay? E point septal separation. So that's your E point. That is your septum. And we talk about the separation. So if you look at this, you know, so your two dimensional echo is on top and the cursor is right there. It's your M mode representation on the bottom. You know, this is your septum right there, LV cavity with the mitral valve. This is your E point and your septum. So, you know, if you measure it, you go, that's much, much greater than 10 millimeters. So when you do M mode on the vertical axis, you have uh, distance. So this is distance. And on the horizontal axis, you have time. Okay. So that's your E point right there. That is your septum. And if you measure the, the, the you can measure it. and. Uh, see the separation okay e point septal separation so it, it's a good quick method to evaluate uh, ejection fraction but the only thing you can say is it uh reduce or normal okay